This should help map out the contents of the serve loop package on GitHub. After months of initial development, this open data engine was migrated to run atop the Laravel framework, which is a model view controller. So I've done my best to follow this organizational style for my code base. Starting with the composer file, we'll see all the dependencies that serve loop needs on top of the default Laravel installation. Most of the development happens in the controllers folder and the views folder. The controllers contain most of the PHP algorithms and logic which process and manipulate data and call views to the output of the proper results. In the admin controllers, we've got a parallel trunk that loads pages for content that requires a user login. Auth just adds a bit of functionality to the default Laravel authentication process. Globals is another significant chunk of code, which stores a lot of data and functions, which are useful to have handy both from the controllers in the pure PHP and in the views, which are more HTML. The stats controllers are a younger set of classes that are used for more complicated statistical needs, charts, and graphs. But the tree trunk is all stored in the, uh, the tree folder. This is the part of the code that traverses the branching trees uh, through all their nodes to print out the different pages and survey questions. Now leaving the controllers folder in the package, we look at the database folder where, where you'll just see the uh, migration file which is generated by Serveloop and it defines the entire database design in a way that works with Laravel's install process and then a cedar file that fills that database. And this is also generated by the Serveloop database engine. Then next is the models folder. Again, these models are all generated by the Serveloop engine. And there's a, only a couple examples where we've added a little extra functionality on top of this model. And basically when you query the database, it will return one of these uh, models back to you. We've also got a roots folder. From here, you define all the paths that different URLs should take when they're rooted. Next, we've got the uploads folder. This is currently uh, all the images needed for the public website. And finally, we're in the views folder. This is the other most important folder alongside the controllers where you're gonna be doing a lot of editing no matter what you're doing. At the top level, we've got our master template here. So search for Laravel and Blade templates if you wanna learn more about the syntax and some of the shortcuts you can use with Blade templates. The rest of the views are organized in subdirectories here. Uh, we've got a bunch of stuff for the admin area and the, uh, the database design, some of the oldest code in the book, and the tree design, also stuff that I have not upgraded much in the last couple of years. The uh, CSS, so these may look like PHP files, but these are CSS files, um, but they're templates and we can pass variables into them, like an array of CSS variables stored in our system settings. Similarly, down here, the JavaScript folder is uh, this is all JavaScript or Ajax, jQuery. It looks like PHP, but it's really JavaScript with some key variables passed in, sometimes more complex than others. Um, we've got some elements for some smaller little widgets that happen within the site, uh, smaller chunks. We've got a bunch of smaller templates for elements that happen, especially in the forms, and uh, these can be found in this forms folder. And we've got a reports folder, which has some of the uh, more complex little spots within uh, the different reporting systems that are starting to evolve. Also, if you're looking at your client folder, you're likely to have another subdirectory in your views folder that's uh, called nodes. I've been keeping them all here with the, with the first node ID number that it, it becomes used for and a description of it. And uh, I keep all those kind of views in this nodes folder in my client or installation extension of the serve loop package. Finally, we've got a test folder here, which I look forward to filling. <laughs> Feel free to help give me advice on how best to go about this or help breaking up classes into more testable chunks and building tests for them to start getting some unit testing going. So that's all for this round. I hope you can help make this project ever better.